Hi everyone, welcome back to Intermediate Ukulele with me, Matt Stead. Today's video is for anyone that's ever wanted to just dip their toes into soloing or improv, but was a little bit too scared. I'm going to show you how with just five simple notes, a very simple pentatonic scale, we can create lovely, lovely solos on our ukulele. I'm going to show you the joy of improv and how it can be so nice to play with other ukulele players. And I'm going to demystify it, as I always do, hopefully, and make it really, really simple and accessible for everyone. In later videos, we'll go into a lot more detail with techniques, so things like rhythm and groove and literally right hand technique for your fingers. But for today, I'm just going to teach you a simple scale, which is going to allow you to dip your toes into soloing. And I think you're going to really enjoy it. This scale is called the pentatonic scale and it's been around for centuries. In fact, music historians have found that it's the only scale which is involved in every type of music from around the globe, going back a long, long time. And it's simply five notes. How easy is that, right? We've just got to remember five notes. We're going to start with the C major pentatonic scale. I'm going to teach you how it's built, why it's used, why it's that way. And then I'm going to show you how you can use it for some simple solo work. So what is a pentatonic scale? Basically, a pentatonic scale is a major or a minor scale with two scale degrees taken out. That just means it's the normal major or minor scale, like C major or A minor, with two notes taken out. And we're going to have a look at major pentatonic scales today. And major pentatonic scales are quite simply major scales without the fourth and the seventh notes. Don't worry, I'll explain why in a minute, so we'll get there. Here is the C major scale, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, seven notes, no sharps or flats in C major, which is really nice. And the C major pentatonic, notice I've got two notes in green, is that scale without the F and the B the fourth and the seventh notes. So now we've only got five notes, C, D, E, G, A. Now let's have a look at why we would do that, why we would use a pentatonic scale rather than the major scale. When we take out this F and the B note, the five notes that we have left harmonise with each other really nicely. If you have two players playing a solo at the same time, if they play any of these red notes that are left at the same time, they will work, there won't be a massive clash. But our ears don't like the sound of two notes that are right next to each other in the chromatic scale being played at the same time. I'll give you an example. If I play this B and this C, let's do a high C here and a high B here at the same time. Listen to the sound, it's really uncomfortable. Our ears don't like it. And it's because they're a half step away. There's no gap between B and C in the chromatic scale. And that's just because we don't have a B sharp or a C flat. It's just the way our music works. Whereas if we were to play, for instance, D and E at the same time. It's OK, they work together, don't they? As opposed to... So our ears don't mind hearing notes that have a gap in between them or a whole step in between them. But our ears don't like hearing two notes together at the same time that have a half step. So soloists and musicians for hundreds of years have realised by taking out these two notes, you take out the risk of them clashing with notes that are half a step away from each other. In fact, if I take out those notes now, and you can study this on a chromatic scale yourself. Um, I've written out the chromatic scale down the left hand side here. C and a D is a whole step away. There's a gap in between them. Every single one of these red notes, there's a gap. So they all work together. So it means that we can use these five, five notes to create a lovely solo without risk. They're not going to clash with other notes and sound horrible. And that was how the pentatonic scale was born and why it sounds so nice. And it's used from everything from Far Eastern music. It's used in a lot of traditional Japanese music to modern pop music because musicians have realised it takes out the risk in soloing. Here's a fun little experiment which really shows this. Try playing a C note with your third finger of your left hand and we're just going to pick the A string down here with any finger so we have this C note. Notice if we pair that up with a D note 
which is here, second fret of the C string, and pick the two strings we're fingering at the same time, C and D. Still sounds quite nice, doesn't it? If we play C and E at the same time, so we're going to pick the third string down towards the floor open, and we'll pick this C. Still sounds nice, doesn't it? Let's try playing. Uh, let's try playing a C and a G together because they're in the the pentatonic scale. Third fret of the E string, C position where it was. Still sounds nice. I'll do a C and an A. Don't worry about finding this. Still sounds nice. Listen to C and B, the one we got rid of. There's that clash, right? So that's what we're trying to avoid, those clashes of notes in our solos. So before we apply this to soloing techniques, let's learn the C major pentatonic scale. Here we have the notes written out, the ones that are left after we've taken out the F and the B. Now, in one of our beginners videos, we learned the C major scale. So this is basically just that C major scale again, but without the F and the B notes. So we have an open C here, which we can play just by picking the C string open. No fingers at all with your left hand. We've got a D here, just as we would in the C major scale, which is the second fret of the C string. Okay. We have an open E here, which is just the third string towards the floor open. Now we're not gonna play the F we would in the C major scale, so we're gonna jump straight to G here which is the third fret of the E string. We have an A next, easy peasy, right? This is string nearest the floor open. We're not gonna play the B because we've got rid of it. So we could just leave it there. C, D, E, G, and A. But we could also add this high C here. It's as if we've gone all the way through the scale and out the other side, so we can add another high C. So let's play through that scale. So we've got an open C, second fret for D, an open E, third fret for G, an open A, third fret for a high C. Now notice I'm using my corresponding fingers, so any note that's on the second fret, I'm going to use this second finger, and any note that's on the third fret, I'm going to use my third finger. So this D note, which is on the second fret, I'll use my second finger, and this G note that's on the third fret, I'll use my third finger. It makes it really nice and fluid, so I'm not having to kind of move one finger all over the place. And try and get that finger as you play the note, so for instance this G on the 3rd fret for the E string, try and get it towards the right hand side of the fret, so you get a nice clear note. We don't want it back here, where it's going to buzz, we want it over here to the right. Thumb on the back as always, daylight in the circle, and you cut a 45 degree angle. And what I'd like to do is play through that scale from the lowest note to the highest note and back again. I'll show you and you can join in after a couple of times. C, D, E, G, A, high C, and back down A, G, E, D, low C. We'll go back up, D, E, G, A, high C, back down, A, G, E, D, C. And you can play it that around a few times, gradually build up the speed. And can you almost hear that kind of Far Eastern influence? As I say, this is used a lot in Far East music. You can kind of get a feel of it playing through that scale up and down. And as with all our scales, if you can try and say the notes out loud or in your head as you go, it will really help to remember where these notes are on the fretboard. Um, I've known a lot of students in the past that are brilliant with patterns, but they wouldn't necessarily be able to name the notes that they've just played. So you really want to be able to say C, D, E, G, A, C. So for instance, if I said, where's G, you would then be able to name it and play it. Really good practice for learning the notes on the fretboard. Now here's the exciting bit. Let's put this to practical use. 
First of all, knowing these notes is really important and useful because these are the notes that artists and composers would have used to create melodies in the key of C, for instance. So knowing these notes means that if you're playing a piece of music in the key of C, these are the ones that are most likely to come up. So it's really useful. And in a while, we'll look at how to play these down the fretboard so you can start using them all over the place. The other use is for improvisation or soloing. So for years and years, um, musicians have learnt the power of these pentatonic scales and how simple they are. And loads of musicians will only use pentatonic scales to solo with, believe it or not. It's quite incredible because this, they sound so good. Now, later in the, in the course, we'll learn how we compare major scales with minor keys and vice versa and things like that. But just for now, know that if a song is in the key of C major, you can use the C major pentatonic scale to solo with. If a key is in A major, you'll use the A major pentatonic scale to solo with. And if you don't know the A major pentatonic scale, you can look it up in a book or on Google. So it's not, you know, you don't have to know all these off by heart, but we'll start with C and we'll try and get you to learn that one. Let's look at some really lovely practical uses. What I'm going to do is I'm going to play a backing track. This is just a series of chords. If you're interested, it's a 2-5-1 progression. D minor 7, G7 and C major 7. Don't need to know that, but just if you're interested. These are chords that fit in the key of C as a backing track. I'm going to play the backing track and show you how these notes sound beautiful with it, how they work, how they harmonise. And then I'm going to keep that backing track playing. It will just be in the distance in the background and you can have an experiment yourself. If you'd like to play the backing track louder and you'd like to have more practice with your, this yourself, I'm using one called a jazz backing track 2-5-1 progression in C major, but I will put the link in the description below. And there are loads of these backing tracks on YouTube. It's really brilliant for that. Let's have a listen. So what I'm going to do is play the backing track and I'm just going to play up and down the scale. You can join in if you want. And you'll notice that every single one of these notes harmonises with the music. None of them sound out of place. Let's have a listen. C, D, E, G, A, C. Then I can do it again. Here we go. Bit fast now, two, three, four, C, D, E, G, A, C. Let's come back down, G, E, D, C. Notice that every one of those notes are fitting. If I play a note not from that pentatonic scale, oh, it doesn't work, does it? If I go back to the pentatonic scale, any of those five notes it's always going to work it's like magic you can't go wrong have a little play around yourself i'll keep the backing track going try going up and down the scale or just try a little solo just put the volume up slightly Isn't it like magic? Keep going, have an experiment. A few more seconds. Okay. Now, here's something really cool. If you're struggling to create a kind of an interesting sounding um, solo, and again, we'll look at technique on this in another video um, in a lot more detail. But say we're just playing the scale up and down. Sorry. It's just going to sound like a scale up and down, isn't it? Rather than a solo. So try mixing it up. You don't have to play the notes in that order. We could start mixing it up. Try mixing up the order, first of all, and that will create a bit more interest. The next thing is a rhythm. And again, we'll look at this in more detail later on in the course. But if you can't think of a rhythm to play and it's just a bit boring playing just notes on the beat, try thinking of a rhythm of another song in your head and match the notes to that rhythm. They don't have to match the melody. But for instance, London Bridge is falling down. London Bridge is falling down. 
falling down, falling down, London bridges. I can match any of the notes to that um, rhythm and it will sound good. London Bridge is falling down, London Bridge is falling down. So I'm keeping the rhythm in any order. Have a listen, I could do that track. London Bridge is falling down. So you could use um, any rhythm from any song that you can find and start pairing that with the notes and you'll get something interesting. Let's play the backing track for a few more seconds so you can have a little practice with that. If it's not coming through clear enough in your speakers, go and find a backing track and then come back to the video after you've have a, had a practice. But let's do 30 seconds or so. Just keep playing through those notes up and down. Now, one more thing that can really help your soloing, and again, we'll look at more detail later on in the course, but just to give you a snippet of idea, sometimes less is more, and the notes that you don't play are as important as the notes that you do play. So don't feel that you have to fill every second with a note. Sometimes just a few notes and played with a rest can sound really effective. Notice a gap. Sometimes even just a couple of notes and a nice gap. So have an experiment with that, add some gaps in. Hopefully you can see the magic is happening already. You're pairing notes from a scale which harmonises with music. And if someone was playing some chords in the key of C, a friend or a club member, you could solo along with them. Isn't that magic? So you see, it's not as complicated as everyone makes out when you're soloing. Some simple five note scales can make all the difference. Let's look at taking that scale a bit further. So, so far we've learned one octave. That means we've gone through the scale from the lowest note to the highest note once. When we hit that new, that high C, we're starting a new octave. So we can play the same notes, but higher up. Way up there. I'll teach you how. Now, what I've done here on the diagram, I'm having to get low to show you this. I hope you don't mind, it'll look like David Attenborough cr crouching down or something. What I've done is I've continued the scale along the A string, which is your high string. It's gonna allow you to reach a whole other octave. So rather than playing D here as a low D, I've carried on and we're gonna play D at the fifth fret of the A string. We can play an E at the seventh fret of the A string. We can play a G, a whole octave up at the 10th fret. And we can even go to a high C way down here, which is way up at the 15th fret. Now, Here's something really magical. Sorry, I'm going out of shot on it. Here's something really magical about the C pentatonic scale played along the A string. Can you something, notice something cool which makes it easy to remember the notes? Every single note from your pentatonic scale in C is on one of your frets with a dot. So we start with C. Some ukes have a dot at three, some don't, but it's easy to remember three anyway, isn't it? We have a C. D is at your next stop, see? E is at your next stop. Then we jump up a few frets to G, but notice it's still your next stop. We jump up two frets to A, next stop, and then we go way up here. Your next stop will be on a C.
So I'm going to play the backing track and this time I want you to practice playing up this scale, going up and down to see if you can find the notes. Now, just like before, if you can say the notes out loud as you're learning them, let's do it now. C, D, E, G, A, C. It will help you remember them rather than just knowing the dots, okay? Notice as I play up, I'll quite often start with my index finger. I might do a couple of jumps with my index. Then maybe I'll go to my third finger, then my little finger, and I'll take it up. I'm not going to be too prescriptive about it, but try not to use just your index finger all the way up because it'll get a bit cramped up here. OK, I'm going to play the backing track. I'll do it once to show you how it works and just play along. They're all fitting, aren't they? All those dots. I can go way up here. Okay. And any. Any order will work. Have a little experiment playing up the A string. You're soloing! It's like magic, isn't it? Five notes, that's all it takes. Hit those dots on the A string, can't go wrong. You know how I said you can't go wrong? <laughs> We're all human, right? So sometimes we might go wrong. We might aim for one of the dots and we accidentally hit a note in between the dots. We have a wrong note. Here's something super cool. As long as you correct that note to quickly play a right note, so to speak, that's called resolving the note. This C works. The C sharp isn't in the C major pentatonic scale, so it doesn't really work but the D is. So as long as I move quickly from the C sharp to a D, it still works. I'm gonna play the track now and notice that I'm gonna play all the wrong notes. I'm gonna play every single note I could play on the A string, including the wrong ones. And as long as I resolve them, I quickly move to a right note, it will sound okay. Have a listen to this, it's like magic. Here we go. All the wrong notes. I'll do it again, I'll come down here so you can see. Two wrong notes in there, right? But as long as I resolve, that's a wrong note. As long as I resolve, it sounds okay. So if you go wrong, just quickly move to an adjacent fret and you'll probably get it right. It's like magic. So already we've got pentatonic scale over two octaves. Isn't that amazing that we can use to solo with? Simple five notes down here. And then five notes along the A string, just playing all the dots. Not too much to remember. And suddenly you can solo in the key of C. Isn't that fantastic? Now this last bit is just for those that are more confident. Now, if you want to find a way of walking across the fretboard, so we're not just going from a scale down here and a scale that's just on the A string, it's quite neat to be able to walk our way up. Using more than one string, as I just did. And what I've done is I've put this on the board. Now, I'll do a PDF of this afterwards in the description so that you can print it off so that it's easier and clearer to see. And I'll also do a PDF of the basic C pentatonic scale and the octave one so you have it for posterity as well. Let's have a look at what's happening. Remember that there are lots of notes on a fretboard that can be played all over the place. So, for instance, this high C here at the third fret of the A string, the one that we know and love, can also be played by playing the 8th fret, way up here, of the E string. Notice it's the same note, same pitch. C, C. 
that happens all over the ukulele fretboard and it's a really good practice to use some of those notes on these strings up here rather than just going all the way up one string which can get a bit awkward and you can trip over, over your fingers doing that. So just practice this a few times with me and then you can put it to the backing track. I'll play a little bit at the end. Um, you can also go and find the backing track yourself later on. We're going to play an open C. Second fret for D, but I'm going to use my index finger, which is going to allow me to reach up. Then we're going to go to the fourth fret for another E, using my third finger. We're back to the G here on the third fret for the E string. We're going to jump up two for the A here on the E string. I use my little finger, I'm going to reach right up to the eighth fret for a C here. I'm going to come down here for a D at the fifth fret of the A string. And then I'm going to follow the dots all of the rest of the way up. Okay, so in effect, I've circled in green all of the notes that we can use to kind of create this scale going over the fretboard so we're not just playing up and down one string. Let's have a look one more time. So open C, second fret, fourth fret, G on the third fret, the next string, fifth fret, up to the eighth fret fifth fret of the A string and just follow the dots the rest of the way. Get comfortable with that playing it up and down and that's going to give you a real dexterity all over the fretboard and also allow you to learn some of the notes up here as we go. I'll play the backing track one last time so you can have an experiment. As I say this is only for those more advanced and they feel they'd like to practice this. You can get by using the C pentatonic here and along the A string and it will still sound fab. Let's have a little bit of the track so you can have a little bit of a practice. Okay. I'll play it three once so C E, G, A, up to the 8th fret, 5th fret for D, 7th fret for E, up to 10th for G, 12th for A. Now have an experiment, see if you can find some notes, add those little gaps and a sense of rhythm if you can. I'll keep the track going just for a little bit longer. And if you're not sure, just use the A string using those, just those dots. And you can create a beautiful solo just using that. One more go round. Leave those gaps, remember? Less is more. Fantastic and relaxing. So hopefully that's just allowed you to dip into um, a bit of improvisation and soloing just to get a feel for it and realise that it's not an untenable, far reaching, impossible thing for you to, to grasp. Just five notes and you can start creating something beautiful. And remember that how many songs do you really play in the key of F sharp? Not many, right? You've only got to learn these in a few keys and you'll soon be able to play players with all sorts of songs. I mean, even just the key of C, there's thousands, if not millions of songs that you can play along with. And remember, you're just learning, it's okay to go wrong. And what sounds wrong to one person might not to another anyway. So just experiment and see what sounds good to your ears. Really get to know that pentatonic scale up and down. It'd be useful for just playing other compositions as well.